Hello everybody, Jim here. Welcome back for another video. And uh, today I stayed kind of close to home. I went to the neighborhood of Ikebukuro here in Tokyo. Ikebukuro, if you don't know, uh, is an excellent place to just go and hang out if you just want to like try some foods, do some shopping and check out some gaming related stuff, which is what I wanted to do today. I wanted to do some retro game hunting because they have a couple of good spots to do that in Ikebukuro. And I wanted to play some arcade games because there are several arcades in Ikebukuro, but one in particular is really, really good. Uh, so that's what I did today. And uh, luckily I was not alone. I was joined by a friend today. Uh, my good buddy Destiny was uh, with me today, kind of my little sidekick now and again. Uh, whenever she's in Tokyo, we always like to make time to hang out together and go look for video games and do fun stuff like that. Uh, so that is exactly what we did today. So you're going to see all of that in the video and come back at the end of the video. We're going to take a look at all of the games that I picked up today. Should be pretty damn cool. But with that being said, let's go game hunting. You're excited! Feel these nipples! Oh my goodness, everyone. Look at this. It is a beautiful, bright, sunny day here in Ikebukuro, Tokyo. We're going to do some fun game-related stuff today. And look who's here. Oh my god. It is the Destiny. It's hot. The <laughs> Destiny. Is it hot out here? Or is it just me? <laughs> I, <was laughs> <thinking it. laughs> I was like, no, it's too corny, but apparently not. All right, uh, so, dude, today we're gonna go do some fun gaming stuff here in Ikebukuro. A lot of people, they think of Akiba, places like that, when they want to go look for games, play in arcades. It's, it's like not that much stuff in Akiba. I was there yesterday, it, so many empty shelves. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of getting lame these days, but a lot of people don't know Ikebukuro has some cool stuff too. It like does. what? We're gonna go to a few places th today. For example, people, everybody knows about Super Potato in Akihabara. Did you know there's one here as well? Did you know there is a second Super Potato location here in Ikebukuro as well as a second Mikado Arcade? and Sudagaya, all these places, and a Capcom Cafe, and a Gachapon place. Did you know all of this? And it's only 30 minutes away from it's only, Akibar. It's only 30 minutes away from Akiba. It's central Tokyo, it's pretty convenient. So it's a beautiful day, nice, bright, warm, sunny weather. We got our walking shoes on. Mine aren't really walking shoes, but they are today. Well, you got your walking legs on anyway. Yes. So let's, uh, what do you say, let's go have some fun, do some game shit. Let's do it. Word, let's go. <laughs> And ye shall find. Uh -huh. uh, Destiny, check it out. We found it. We found it, a super potato. Kind of a short walk from the station, what, like 10 minutes or so? Yeah. Uh, but there she be. And I have not been to this one in quite a long time. I think you haven't either. No, I, I was here the last time I was here. So the, the condition though, like what they actually have, if it's gonna be any better than Akiba, it's kind of a mystery right now. Yeah. How is this gonna turn out? Hopefully they have more because I went to the Super Potato in Akiba yesterday and it was rough. It was pretty barren. Okay, so hopefully they got enough where I can find at least a couple of things I feel good picking up. You ready to do this thing? I'm ready to do this thing. Let's go get some games or be horribly disappointed one or the other. Either it's the way. The great mystery. The great mysteries of life. Super Potato. Destiny, what are you seeing? Expensive Dreamcast. <laughs> Expensive Dreamcast. What the hell? Uh, I'm not sure what the, is that? Oh, like the, four, the almost clear five thousand. 498,000 yen. Yeah, it's about four grand. Mm -hmm. Do you have a spare four grand on you? No, I actually saw this the last time I was here because this is a rare uh, Dreamcast. Rare variant? Yeah, and I was, 
as <laughs> That's a little out of even your price range, Oh, eh? that would be like most of what I brought this time. There's some cool stuff up here on the PS1. They've got Gex for eleven seven seventy. I didn't realize Gex was kind of a, a little higher demand. Pepsi Man. Pepsi Man, I have that. It's twenty one four fifty. I like me some Pepsi Man. I like me some Pepsi. I like some Pepsi as well, that's true. Delicious, refreshing Pepsi. Uh. Some PS2, including the Akumajo Dracula collection there. That's pretty cool. Some of these Sega Ages. Mm -hmm. Didn't you say you wanted some of those, or did you find all of them? I found them all. We got Hane-san. It's a fun one. We've got a lot of PC Engine here. Some Lords of Thunder, Ninja Spirits, City Hunter, Soldier Blade, Double Ring. Lots of stuff. All right. And there she goes. Just like all the women in my life. Starting off with some Super Famicom games, and we got some pretty good stuff here right off the bat. Stuff like Darius Twin, the uh, Super Genjin games, Adventure Island, Joe and Mac, East, all that good stuff. All these loose carts, I'll say that the loose carts at least were priced not too terribly bad. There's Raiden Densetsu, that's $22.88, some Seiken Densetsu games, Mystic Quest, etc. You have to keep in mind uh, the current exchange rate. And uh, the lighting was so low in here, so excuse that. But we have Area 88 right here. Uh, 2178. And it's a little uh, not so great on the back, but um, 2178, that's something like what? I don't know, like 18 bucks? Stargate for 3828. I don't think I've ever seen this game anywhere in Japan thus far. I used to rent that game all the time and beat it over weekends. Um, but we got Star Fox, we got some Kunio Kun. We got all kinds of stuff. Uh, so the loose cards, a uh, little hit or miss. I did find some stuff that was really reasonably priced today, though. We've got boxed games like Act Razor, Bomberman. Again, Super Genjin 2. That's pretty cool. Some R-Type. Uh, pretty much any of the Rockman games. They'll have 7, X, X2. And we've even got some Contra, some Final Fight Guy. Magical Drop 2. Over there, uh, as you can see, some of these games are listed as sample. Those are going to be the games that are more valuable. You'll need to take those to the back to uh, select which one you want in various conditions and prices. We got a lot of Bomberman. We got some Mickey. We've got other various titles here, uh, including what is that? Uh, what a Jet Punks? What is it? Um, some Dragon Ball and some Empire Strikes Back. That's six thousand twenty-eight yen on the sample and some Sailor Moons as well uh, most of the games that are not marked as being sample games most of them you can pick up for I don't know in the neighborhood of like 15 bucks or less we've got lots of Goimons including Gombody Goimon 2 which is my personal favorite in the series uh, Super R-Type which is okay but it doesn't hold a candle to uh, R-Type 3 Sonic Wings 6028 that's a game that's not getting any cheaper. We got Psycho Dreams, Sparkster, uh, other various excellent games, including Axe Lay 6578, one of the best shoot 'em ups on the SNES and Super Famicom. But it's getting more expensive by the day. You also had Super Swiv and some other various things. Uh, and more boxed games. Uh, and again, I have to say, the lighting in here was so much uh, darker than it is in the uh, Akiba Super Potato. Uh, Arkanoid by Taito, pretty cool indeed. And you got some Kaniku Man, some Aladdin. Rockman X2, complete inbox, and that's 6,908 yen. That's like 50 bucks, which uh, is not cheap, but I think compared to like a complete copy of Mega Man X2 on the SNES, that's downright reasonable. 
Uh, we got Poppin' Twin B. We got some Final Fight, Final Fight 2, etc., etc. And where are we going? Where are you going, Jim? Ah! Well, that does make sense, doesn't it? Uh, we're looking at some Super Famicom games now. Let's move on over to the old, good old Famicom. 5368 for Ikati. And again, you know, when I see some of these games, especially some of the box games, I comment on how much more expensive they're getting. Um, 7238 for Rockman 5. Uh, but again, I mean, that's like a $60 game right there, but uh, I can only imagine what a complete copy of Mega Man 5 on the NES in North America would go for. So, I don't know, it's almost like being spoiled. So while sometimes I'll see a game like getting more expensive and I'm like, man, this is way more expensive than it used to be, I have to actually think about what the collectors over in the U.S. are going through. 4,048 yen for a complete, really good shape Gradius. And again, what does a complete copy of Gradius on the NES go for these days? I don't know. You tell me. I, my guess is it's going to be like a couple of hundred bucks, though. Um, this kind of cool, the 8-bit uh, music power final. One of the, um, I think, Columbus Circle published games. They have some cool stuff. Twinkle Star Sprites. No, not Twinkle Star Sprites. Whatever it was. Twinkle something or other DX. Those are fun. Gradius, $12.98 for a loose cart. So, like, maybe a little under 10 bucks for a loose cart of Gradius. And we've got some of the uh, YY World, some Goemon, all that good stuff. And Rockman games. All right. $12.98 for a loose Rockman 5. That ain't so bad. Kid Dracula, other various things. I'm going a little fast today because, uh, well, it was pretty damn cramped in here. And uh, I'm not uh, the size of person that uh, likes cramped spaces. 6908 for the original Contra. And 4378 for Super C. So Super C is actually more affordable than the original uh, Contra. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, cramped aisles like this for a guy who's 6'1", 200 some odd pounds. It's a little bit of a squeeze. So we do a little bit of the old in and out. Uh, but yeah. Lots of games. Hello, Kunio Kun. You're always, uh, always a, f a lot of fun. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's take a look at uh, what Destiny's doing. What do you say? Destiny, Destiny Chan. Are you seeing anything that is tickling your fancy? I'm like seeing things, but not like the exact things I'm looking for. Not the exact things. So like, what is that in your hand? I like to take, I like to bring pictures so that instead of having to explain what I'm looking for, I could just give them the picture. You know what? That's very considerate <laughs> of you. I actually heard that they posted a sign at the other Super Potato I asking see, people to do something like really? that. Really? Yeah. I saw they posted a sign about something, but I didn't see it when well, I went they, to Super they Potato. politely asked people, please don't steal. And if you don't speak Japanese, just show us a picture of what you want. There what are you looking for? Half a new pad. That's six. Okay. A DD drive? I don't think I'm going to find it. Uh, I've been looking for not. a while. That, uh, they, um, they might have one of those like box or something. Let's see what else. That will be easy to find. Easy to find, of course. With oh, with Jordan on the Wizards. <clears throat> maybe, maybe. Wrestling. That I should be able to help you find. This. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Kinikuman. And I was looking for a box one of this. USA. We can browse for that. Yep. All right. That should not be too tall of an order. Let's, it shouldn't in theory. It shouldn't in theory. Let's see what we can do. All right. Back to it. Back to the grind. Let's cross! Okay, getting started once again uh, with some PS2 games this time, which uh, I'm pretty sure I've said this before. I've probably said it numerous times as we look at these uh, games. But if you're a game collector and you're looking for maybe like a new console to get into as we take a look at some cool stuff, Metal Slug Complete. Look at all those games in one convenient package. Uh, even though it is 6,578 yen, it's about 55 bucks. That ain't cheap. 
Uh, which makes it funny because as I'm about to say, hey, collecting for the PS2 <laughs> is kind of a cheaper option these days than collecting, especially if you, you know, take into consideration like, I don't know, uh, the Sega consoles, PC Engine, stuff like that. PS2 is a much cheaper alternative. We got some really cool PS1 games there. Lightning Legend, Rockman X4. Rockman, was that X5 or X6? Uh, we got a bunch of stuff here. The, the PS1 too, I can say, is also kind of a cheaper alternative. 28 38 for that Asuka 120%. G Darius. Uh, for 1958, that's actually a good price on uh, G Darius. There, as we move right along, we've got all kinds of just stuff all scattered around here. Uh, we got Mega Drive games here. Mega Drive, one of the more expensive consoles in Japan, at least to collect for. Um, yeah, I would say definitely if you're looking for like a new, maybe less uh, expensive console to collect for, PS1, PS2 could be. Uh, a good idea. Thirty-two seventy-eight for this kind of, I don't know, like a, a more recent homebrew game? I have no idea what the hell that was. Uh, we've got some cool stuff here. Thunder Force 2, you saw some Rambo over there. Pit Fighter, Aladdin Dice Simpu, which is a game I like quite a lot. Master of Monsters, Monster World 3, which is a pretty fun game indeed. Forty-seven oh eight for Street Fighter 2 Dash Plus. Uh, so that's Champion Edition. They got Darius 2, 48, 18. And that's complete with all the good stuff inside. Uh, Rent a Hero, other various things. And ooh, this is something I always like the Dreamcast. Uh, here we have uh, no manual with this Star Gladiator 2. That's unfortunate. Um, but Star Gladiator 2, fantastic game. Any of the fighting games on the Dreamcast are pretty much going to be great. 18 wheeler 17 38 uh, I am a fan of 18 wheeler I'm not a not a don't I don't mind telling you I do like me some 18 wheeler action you get in there you drive your 18 wheeler and then you go over to the truck stop and you say hi to some ladies it's a very realistic game uh, and then some Sega Saturn as well. We got some cool stuff. Road Rash, Bug is not so great. But Layer Section, hello, 3388. Love that game, a.k.a. Galactic Attack, which you can now find in the Ray uh, uh, collection, I think, Ray's Arcade Chronology. Gusu no Yo-Yo S, very fun puzzle game. We got some Gradius collection. We got some King of Fighters 95, including with and without the uh it's not a ram card is it it's like a rom cart i uh, had some magical drop three magical hoppers this is an interesting one i think 3168 this is called pandemonium in uh, north america pretty fun little 2.5d platformer we got some other cool stuff here ultraman dragon ball z etc 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 uh, again, just a quick scan around, some good stuff, but uh, let's let's get our games and get out of here. Oh my God, Destiny! What a it was. How was that? What would you say? Uh, it was it was okay. I mean, we found some stuff. We found some stuff. I got a golden. Gold place, uh, gold place, a gold N64. Solid gold, by the way. It's worth about fifty thousand dollars. Store. Word, nice. I almost got a PSP, but it had no battery, and yeah. that's the hardest part. It was a little busted. Um, so you got some stuff for yourself. That's cool. I got some games for myself too. Nice. I'm actually gonna save that for later when I do my pickups. Uh, but I did get some cool like Super Famicom, Dreamcast, and PlayStation stuff, so nice. uh, that'll be later, but... I didn't find anything on my cards. So. Oh well, those cards, they didn't come in handy, but guess what, dude? We, we still got, got another stock. We got plenty of daylight left. We do, actually. There's a Sudogaya not too far from here. You ready to go uh, carry on the hunt? Let's go. Let's rock. <laughs> Alright, 
Uh, Destiny, here we are at the Pseudo Gaia. Very short walk from the Super Potato. Oh, great, yeah. <laughs> right here okay. in front of us with, uh, I don't know, a really creepy doll store as well. So that's fun. All right. Yeah, yeah. Look. It's yeah. the style of the dolls now. Very it, collectible. That's the style now? For some dolls, yeah. Creep like the hell the out of you? Eyes, the anime eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the, okay. Mm -hmm. The whole world's gone creepy then. Yes. I guess I'm just the old fashioned guy. Mm -hmm. All right. So. It looks closed, Jim. It is closed. It looks it is closed. Jim. All right. So. How about we just uh, sort of act out what it would have been like if we came here and uh, oh, we went inside and do 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 and there's games and the, okay. Well, that was a bummer. Couldn't find much. <laughs> they're closed until June 29. Why? Because they're renovating, I guess. Oh. And moving stock around. Oh. Well, Destiny, that is a bit of a bummer. Where to now? But you know what, Destiny? The day's not lost because we still have an arcade to go to. Oh, yeah. There we go. Are you ready to go play some arcade games? Yes. Are you ready to walk back to where we just were? I guess so. We have no choice. All right. You're a real trooper today. All Let's right. do it. Let's go. Oh, Destiny, look. Look what it is. We made it. So again, another short like 10 minute walk or so from where the Sudagaya was. And yeah, this place isn't closed until next month. So that's good too. Oh, it's closing uh, next month? No, it's not closed oh, okay. until next month. Do you listen when I speak, I woman? You said too um, <laughs> so we got the Mikado Game Center here. Uh, the more well-known one is in Takadano Baba. That's the one most people go to. But just like Super Potato, there is a second location here in Ikebukuro uh, that is less frequented, but still has a lot of cool games and uh, fun stuff to do. So what do you say, bro? Let's get in there. Let's go play these games. Go do it. Rock on. Destiny, that was the Mikado here in Ikebukuro. What'd you think? It was all right. It was a good time. Pretty fun. I got, I got, they told me to stop filming. Yeah, they didn't like that too much. They really? But uh, luckily, we got plenty in before that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. We had a good time. We played a lot of games. Kick some butt. We kick some, some butt. Kick some names. Take some ass. All that. Got our ass took a little bit too. I didn't get mine. You didn't get yours taken. <laughs> I tell you, you you didn't go downstairs. 
okay. You want to know what happens. <laughs> you don't want to know what happens down there. Anyway, uh, that was fun. All right. Did some game shopping. A little bit. A little tiny bit. Did some arcade games playing. Had ourselves a good time. Ike Bakuro. So, uh, for all you people coming around, because there's other stuff here. There are other arcades around. And there's lots of food. There's lots of food, lots of restaurants, lots of fun stuff to do. So, uh, if you know you burn out on Akihabara or whatever, you can come to Ikebukuro. There's more fun stuff to do here too. Lots of things. Lots of good things. So Destiny, any final parting words for the viewers? Get your money up, not your funny up. Peace out, people. That's right. All right, good. And that rhymes too, so you know it's right. All right. All right, bye everybody. See you next time. Destiny. <laughs> Okay, there you go, everybody. How did you like that, huh? We played some games, we bought some games, we did some fun stuff. Uh, the biggest bummer of the day, though, was that Sudagaya was closed uh, for an extended period of time. Um, that really was kind of heartbreaking because, you know, Super Potato is cool and all, uh, but Sudagaya is definitely the place where I would do maybe, like, more of my game hunting. It's typically... Um, a little bit better than Super Potato on the prices and stuff. Not by a lot, mind you. Uh, but typically not seen so much as like an expensive place to buy games that Super Potato is. What? Uh, regardless of that, I was still able to pick up some games that I found at Super Potato. Uh, they weren't too expensive either. I kind of had a look around and uh, I, I wasn't going for anything in the glass cases, wasn't going for any holy grails today. This was more of just kind of like a casual, fun, what can I find kind of game hunt. Uh, so I picked up four games at Super Potato, and uh, four good games, in fact, and the prices on them weren't so bad. This first one, um, it was uh, 1738 uh, yen, which I think in dollars comes out to about $14. Uh, which is not too bad for this game. It's a game I like a lot. A game that I, I'm not sure really how many people are fans of it. Um, but 18 Wheeler, American Pro Trucker. Uh, and I said that wrong. It's actually pronounced 18 Wheeler. Um, I like this game a lot. A uh, fun game by Sega. It was a cool arcade game. It had one of those really big 18-wheeler um, size steering wheels that you could play with. But essentially, it's... Um, I always kind of liken it to Crazy Taxi, even though it's really nothing at all like Crazy Taxi. I guess I just kind of get that feeling because it's a Sega driving game that was released around the same time. Um, but there are some stages where you've got your your load, whatever it is that you're, you're uh, pulling along with your truck, and you've got to get to the end of the stage on time. And you've got a rival that you're trying to beat, and there are cars that you can like knock off the road for bonus points. Uh, an extra time because you want to, you know, beat the clock. So that's pretty fun. And then there are other stages where it's like you have to back your load into a, um, like a certain like loading zone or whatever, and you have to do that within a certain amount of time. And that's a little bit trickier. It's not so much a race as it is just kind of like testing your patience. My favorite stages in the game are obviously the the races. You beat the clock. You beat your uh, your rival, I think the, the first one at least is, what is it, Lizard Tail? He's kind of a jerk, he tries to run you off the road, but it's a lot of fun. And as you fit at finish stages, you get extra little uh, accoutrements for your truck. So you get like horns and decorations and cool stuff like that. Um, so it's a lot of fun, nothing you have to really like dig too deep into. It's very surface level, it's an arcade game. Um, but it is enjoyable, I do like uh, the graphics, I like the, uh, the soundtrack, is pretty cool. And uh, I just like all of the uh, little details, the um, guys on the CB radio and everything talking to you, uh, giving you that feeling, that experience of being a trucker. Um, none of the bad stuff about being a trucker though, they don't have any like stages where you're like at a truck stop and you have to get into a knife fight or anything. Um, but uh, what, what is here is a lot of fun and for like 14 bucks, uh, I was like, hell yeah, because I wanted to play this again. Uh, 18 Wheeler, American Pro Trucker. Lots of fun. Uh, two Super Famicom games here. Both of them were fairly uh, inexpensive. Uh, they put a little sticker over the freaking price tag, but I think these were both like seven bucks with exchange rate. Uh, but first up, Magical Drop 2. Uh, and this is a lot of fun. Magical Drop puzzle game series. Kind of like, I always think of it almost as like a an alternate dimension like Puzzle Bobble because the little um, spheres, the little balls that you shoot up, the little multicolored balls, uh, look the same and it's the same premise. You just match up balls of the same color 
but instead of them uh, coming down at you, kind of like a, a, a Tetris or a, 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 um, a uh, Puyo Puyo, if you will, you're firing them up at the top of the screen, just like in Puzzle Bobble, but you're firing them in like direct lines. So you pull them down and you throw them back up again and you match them up by color. And there's a single player mode where you just have to clear the screens and beat the clock. And then there's a versus computer mode and there's also a two player versus mode. Um, so just like any good puzzle game, it's addictive and it's fun and it's especially fun when you have someone to play against. And uh, I've always liked the magical drop games. This one in particular, um, it is also available, I think, on pretty much like everything else that was around at the time. There's definitely a Sega Saturn version that I know of, probably a PS1 version as well. And I'm not sure if there are any magical drops on the N64, but uh, either way, this is a game you can get on a lot of different consoles. I can probably find it digitally all over the place these days. And there's Magical Drop 3 and Magical Drop this and that and the other. Uh, there's so many games in this series, but for like seven bucks uh, on the Super Famicom, uh, I just couldn't say no because I likes me a good puzzle game. Uh, Magical Drop 2, that's a lot of fun. Looking forward to playing that a little bit. Uh, next up, two shoot 'em ups one for the Super Famicom, one for the PlayStation, both in the same series. Uh, first up, though, also for about seven bucks, even though the the back of the cartridge is a little yellow. The front of the cartridge looks pretty good, but this is Darius Twin. And I am a fan of the Darius series. I've played pretty much all of them, I think. Darius Twin, this is a Super Famicom slash SNES exclusive, uh, I do believe. So it was made specifically for this hardware. So as you're playing it, it plays pretty smoothly. There's not like a ton of slowdown or anything like that that's typically associated uh, with Super Nintendo shoot 'em ups but like a, a lot of Super Nintendo games just sort of in general. Um, but it plays pretty smoothly. It's it's not the best shooter on the console. Um, it's uh, The Darius games are typically like pretty uh, difficult, I think. This one, not so much. Part of that is because of the hardware limitations. They can't really have so many enemies on the screen all at the same time. Uh, so they kind of come in in like little, little spurts and uh, they're, they're not so difficult to take out. The hardest part of this game is, uh, of course, the boss battles, and even those aren't too terribly difficult. I would say of all the Darius games, this one is probably the easiest, um, but it is still pretty damn fun. Plays just like any other Darius game. You get your power-ups, pop your lasers and your missiles, and your defensive shield, and then you can choose a path through all the various different stages in the game. Uh, so it's really cool. Uh, I like this game quite a bit. And uh, again, for like seven bucks uh, at a place like Super Potato, uh, you really can't argue with that. So Darius Twin, good game indeed. I can pick it up on your Super Famicom, your SNES. Although I do believe if you're a collector, you want physical copies. Pretty sure the Japanese version uh, is the much cheaper option. And sticking with Darius, I got um, a pretty good game in the series on the PS1. Uh, most people will say if there's a 32-bit Darius game for you to play, you should play Darius Gaiden. Uh, and they're right, because that's a really good game, but this one is definitely no slouch. It is G Darius. And G Darius, uh, again, plays like a lot of other Darius games. So you got all of your, um, your standard power-ups for your primary shot and your laser and your shield. You choose your uh, path through all the various stages of the game. You got your big, huge boss spaceships shaped like all kinds of like fish and mollusks and weird things like that. That's uh, kind of, you know, signature of the series. But something kind of cool in this game that I don't think is included in any other Darius game. You can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but you have capture balls in this game, and that's kind of cool. You can use your capture balls to capture enemy spaceships and then use them as kind of like little um, little options to like boost your uh, uh, your firepower, and they all have a something a little different. So you can get tiny little ships or like big ships, and they'll follow you around, and they'll uh, fire weapons of their own, uh, and that's really cool. So you can pick up a ship, use it as much as you want, and then swap it out for a better ship later. You have a limited number of capture balls, but you can get more, and uh, that's kind of the gimmick of the game. This is it's Darius, but it has the inclusion of those capture balls which is pretty cool. And now that I think about it, is this also a console exclusive? Was this released outside of, uh, outside of the PS1? I'm not 100% sure, but it is a lot of fun. Uh, the, the visuals are, are pretty decent. Uh, you can tell this, you know, they're getting into a 3D era, so they're trying to incorporate a little bit of that. So the game has a 3D look to it, though it is still a traditional side-scrolling shooter. 
Uh, and it has a couple of different gameplay modes. You have the original, okay, I guess so, an arcade mode. So presumably this was an arcade released before the PS1. But you have an arcade mode, you have a beginner mode, which is very nice for people who don't play a lot of games like this. And I think there's even a boss rush mode. Uh, so that's really cool, and I think I picked this game up. It's 1958 yen, so probably about $15 uh, I picked this up, which I thought wasn't such a bad deal, uh, considering it is a pretty awesome game, and I myself am a big shoot 'em up fan. Uh, so that is G Darius on the PS1. Another cool game. Uh, and that's it. Those are the four games I picked up today. Again, I anticipated picking up more games at the Suda Gaia, so I kind of controlled myself when I was at Super Potato, just picked up four reasonably priced uh, fun games, uh, planning to go to Suda Gaia and maybe buy a bunch more. Uh, didn't work out that way, but we had a really good day anyway. Uh, Destiny, I gotta thank Destiny for coming and hanging out. Uh, pretty much, like I said at the beginning of the video, anytime she comes to visit Tokyo, uh, we'll usually uh, have at least like a day or two, we'll set some time aside and we go hang out, go hunt for video games, go play games at arcades, or, or just go, uh, you know, chill out with some friends, go get some food, go get something to drink, do stuff like that. Uh, so I appreciate her uh, hanging out today, being in the video. Uh, definitely, she has a channel of her own, obviously, much, much bigger than mine. I'm sure everyone's already aware of it, uh, but if not, there'll be a link in the description. Uh, go and check it out. And thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video today, and I hope you'll come back for the next one where we will continue our game hunting antics uh, here in Japan. So until then, uh, take care, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.